You can actually sculpt organic forms from scratch using the sandbox tools. Click the second button to create a grid from scratch. Before you do anything, you can set the grid spacing right here. I'll set this up to be two feet, and I'll press return. Then click three points to create the grid. One corner, the other corner, and the third corner determines this rectangle. The grid is just a flat plane that's been subdivided into an even grid here in both directions. Now I can use the Smooth tool, which smooths and moves the vertices all in one operation. It's very similar to Soft Selection in 3ds Max. Smooth works directly on the edges and faces, so you actually have to open the group before you can use it. Then click Smooth, and you'll see a circle attached to your cursor. You can set the radius. I'll type in 16 feet, and the circle gets a little bit larger. Click a point, and you're moving. You can see the dots are larger, where we have more of an effect, and they're smaller as it fades off into the periphery. So I can move this up and down. I can hold down the Shift key to move normal to the surface average. I can make the radius smaller. Here I'll make it only 3 feet in radius. Then I can pull these down. Notice that the curvature is controlled by the granularity of the mesh. I'm creating kind of a divot here in the object because there isn't really enough geometry there to represent this in a smoother fashion. So I can go in here and select these individual faces and then use the Add Detail tool right here to subdivide them. And then I can go ahead and create a smoother looking hole in this mountain by using the Smooth tool again. Now I have more geometry to work with, so the curvature can be a little bit more subtle. The Add Detail tool does more than just add detail. Just to summarize it, if you select a face and then click Add Detail, it will subdivide that face. If instead you don't have a selection and you click Add Detail, what this does is it allows you to move the vertices either in the blue direction or if you hold down the Shift key, Normal to the surface. This last tool here allows you to flip edges. I'll click on it, and then click on different edges to flip the triangulation. Now these tools don't have to be used with the landscapes that you make, either from contours or from scratch. You can use Smooth, Add Detail, and Flip Edge on any object you make in SketchUp. Remember, there's no special data type in SketchUp. Everything is just ultimately a collection of edges and faces. I'm sure you're aware you can move individual vertices, edges, and faces. But did you know you can actually change the topology of the organic form, that is, its internal structure? The way this works is by pressing M first without having any selection. Then click a vertex, move it over, click it on top of another one. This will alter the topology or structure. You can connect the dots and SketchUp will heal any vertices that are on top of each other, keeping them internal edges. In this way, we can sort of reduce the amount of complexity of a mesh by pulling edges over and connecting them together. So using some combination of these techniques, whether it's the Move tool, the Smooth tool, Add Detail, or Flip Edge, you should be able to model just about anything given enough inspiration and patience. You can improve the appearance of an organic form by hiding all of the edges, and you can do that globally by selecting All Connected, going to the Window menu and opening up the Soften Edges dialog, choose Soften Coplanar, and you can fool with this slider here to see how much will be hidden. And you can also do this manually with the Eraser tool, hold down the Option key, and scrub over edges that you want to soften.
In 3ds Max, there's a whole class of objects called patches, which are very smooth surfaces that you can deform to create organic models. We can do the same thing here in SketchUp with a plugin called Bezier Patch by Victor Liu. Once it's installed, you can create a Bezier Patch from the Draw menu. You're presented with this dialog box. The order refers to the number of control points that you have, and it's actually one more than this number. So if we set the order to be 2 by 2 in the coordinates of the surface, which is UVW space, we'll have actually 3 by 3 control points. The steps refer to how granular the mesh is, so a higher number here makes a smoother and more deformable surface. I'm just going to go with the defaults and click OK. And then I'll click the start point, the second point, and the third point. This creates a surface. So there are 12 subdivisions in both directions, and to see the order or number of control points, you have to select the object, right click, and choose Edit Bezier Patch. If you look closely, you'll see there's some gray handles. There are three by three. I can take this handle here, hold the up arrow down to lock the blue inference, and drag it up. If you look closely, you can just see the deformed surface represented in this light gray color. As I orbit, it disappears, however. And so we just have to take a look at it here in a static viewpoint. And if we're happy with it, we can go ahead and right-click and choose Done. And the surface is deformed. The patch doesn't have to be rectangular. You can right-click and edit the patch. Grab one of these control points. Move it and then right-click and choose Done. So the patch is pretty flexible, but it's limited in comparison with 3ds Max, because we don't have the ability to subdivide the patch any further, nor can we add an additional patch along an edge in an elegant way. Of course, you can create another patch object next to it if you want, but there's no real connection between the objects. If you want to hide the triangulation within the patch, double-click to open the group, and then triple-click to select All Connected. Open the Soften Edges window and check Soften Coplanar. That's all there is to it. So lots of different professions can use this type of geometry. For example, naval architects might use it to create a boat hull. Industrial designers might use patches to create injection molded parts. And landscape designers might use these to create landforms. Use the Bezier patch as an alternative to the sandbox tools. Soap Skin and Bubble is an amazing plugin by Joseph Liebinger that allows you to create tensile membranes. Let's load it as an extension. And you'll see the toolbar. Before we can use these tools, we have to create a closed loop of edges. To do this, I'll use the Polygon tool, and I'll just make a hexagon. Then I'll go ahead and select this face and delete it. Right now the edges are a closed polyline, and that would work for the plugin, but I'd like to change the form by making this closed loop three-dimensional. So to do that, I need to right-click and explode the curve, turning it into six individual line segments. Then I'll deselect and select these two opposite edges, holding down the Shift key to do so. Then I'll move these up in the blue direction to create this form. What Soap Skin and Bubble can do is create a surface that bridges all of these edges and connects them together in a smooth way. I'll select all of the edges and then click this first button that says Skin. Down here we're asked to set the number of divisions. Right now we have 10 in each direction. I'll type in 20 to make the surface a little bit more granular so it will curve that much more smoothly. Press return to set the division, and then press return once more to calculate the surface. If this is all the plugin did, I'd be happy, but there's more. Press the space bar to go to the selection tool, and click on the surface. Then click on the third button here. It's not obvious by the icon or the text here, but if we click on this button, it allows us to set the pressure. Right here, the pressure is undefined. Down here in the Measurements toolbar, it's asking for pressure, 
and the status bar tells us that we can use a positive or a negative input pressure. Let's see what happens when we type in 10, press return, and the surface gets inflated. Let's try negative 10. The surface is deflated or sucked down. Let's try a positive pressure of 30. It's inflated with even more air. It's like blowing a soap bubble. The ratio value up here is currently 1, which means that we have even tension in both directions along the membrane. We can change that to create a different form. Select the object and click this second button to set the ratio. Right now the ratio is 1. Let's try a ratio of 3. So there's more tension in one direction than the other, and this allows the pressure to be distributed in a different way. Let's try a ratio of 0.25. If you have a very complex object with lots of divisions, it might take a long time for this to calculate, and you can stop the animation by clicking this button, and you can restart it by clicking the play button. You can go to the author's website by clicking the final button.